Hey guys, what's up? It's Jules here for WhatCulture.com, fresh off the back of the Evolution pay-per-view hosted by the WWE, and what a night of wrestling it's been. Everyone came together to celebrate women's wrestling in the best possible way, and I personally really enjoyed this pay-per-view. There were some ups, there were some downs, Simon Miller, hello, um, but there mostly was some great wrestling on show. And what I'm going to do is going to run through each and every match and just tell you what happened? So, we kick things off with Trish Stratus and Lita going up against Alicia Fuchs and Mickie James. Unfortunately, Alexa Bliss wasn't involved in this match, even though it should have been her and Mickie James going into it, because of the fact that she's working with an injury, so Alicia Fuchs had to step in for her. This did affect the match quality somewhat, because as much as I don't want to rag on Alicia, she does miss a lot of spots. She almost missed uh, coming in to break up a pin. There was a lot of like yelling and shouting that does kind of detract from it, but that's not the point. The match popped the crowd in the right way. A lot of people were saying that they didn't expect us to see this kick off the show. However, it made perfect sense because it got the crowd hyped immediately. Seeing Trish and Lita back again and not at each other's throats was definitely interesting and everyone hit their moves or stratisfaction. We saw the Lita moon salt. Lita wearing a very strange ensemble that combined fishnet bodysuit with thong. Very weird. All in all though, very enjoyable match and did the right thing, getting the crowd hyped in the right way. And the Legends picked up the win, so that's a bonus as well, isn't it? Then we moved on to uh, the Battle Royale, which was historic. And by historic they meant that they were basically just bringing in tons of Legends, like Alundra Blaze, and then they had Ivory and people like that coming in, and they pitted them against new up-and-coming stars as well. This is a match that held possibly the greatest potential, but unfortunately just fell short of delivering on the iconic historical moment of it. And iconic is actually the right word, because the iconics came down and then immediately got en like, uh, eliminated straight away after delivering their usual heelish, dickish promos. I was a bit disappointed to see the likes of Molly Holly, especially Phil was disappointed, go out without getting in any offence. Uh, the only person that really got any offence that was a legend was the uh, was Michelle McCool. Don't know why I did the quotes there, she definitely is a legend. Um, the so. I was disappointed in the fact that when it all came down to what story was in the Battle Royale, it was Nia Jax, Tamina and Ember Moon. Now out of the three of those, Ember Moon needs the win the most. Not because of the fact that she's suffering where she is, but she has the most to gain from winning. But Nia Jax won. The person that a lot of people really didn't really want to see, her position in the card isn't affected by this. She was near upper tier to begin with, so winning just means that she's upper tier still, whereas Ember Moon could have been moved into the into the big picture. It, it seemed like a bit of a strange waste there. There were some good spots though. We had a triple or quadruple suplex that went on. It was enjoyable, but kind of like a fluff match, so can't really say it lived up to the historic moment of it. But then we got something that truly was historic, because we got Tony Storm versus Iro Shari, and that was a really, really good match. Like. The Mae Young Classic brings out the best in female wrestling, that's the up and coming class. And this really was a perfect execution. The match itself started slowly and it built. And it really gave off the impression of, and this is me just being a proper smarky marky, it kind of felt very New Japan. Slow, laboured, very hard hits. You could hear them echoing throughout the room but it delivered on some big spots. There was a fantastic moonsault from the top that saw Io got so much back angle arc and land on Tony. It was brutal, but beautifully done. And then there was a snap German suplex on the apron that just looked like it would have bloody wrecked for days. In short, it was everything that I wanted it to be, and even better when Tony Storm picked up the win. She totally deserves it. She got like, you know, but she's been working the indies for so long now, it's her time to shine, and neither woman is walking away a loser here because they're both gonna go on to brilliant things, and it was just really nice seeing the respect that they showed each other before and after. It was just a really entertaining match. Then uh, we moved on to uh, Natalia, Sasha Banks, and Bailey versus the Riot Squad, and I have to admit, not really the match for me, personally. Uh, only because of the fact that I'm reminded, when I look at this, We've got Bailey, we've got Sasha Banks, part of the Four Horsewomen, the original ones in NXT. Why are they in this kind of messy mid-card six women tag match? It just felt like a placeholder match just to give them something to do. If we're being 
truly honest about it and if it was celebrating what had come before, it would have made sense for them to have been just the two of them versus two of the Riot Squad in a stipulation match that felt like it held the gravitas of what they'd done for the company. That's not to, to besmirch. Natalia, it, she's a fine, she's a fine wrestler. Again, not for me, the whole cat gimmick is a bit weird, but the double sharpshooter that she tried to pull off was great. Sasha Banks' botch was not. She tried to flip over the top rope, but unfortunately she didn't quite stick the landing and she bumped herself down to the ring apron. It looked pretty messy. However, it didn't stop them from winning, so that's, that's always good, I guess. Yeah, so yeah, and moving on, then we had uh, Kyrie Zane versus Shayna Baszler for the NXT Women's title. Now, this was a fantastic match because it started off by showing the best thing about each woman. Shayna Baszler came down to the ring and she does that horrible sort of like smarmy slow pose. She gets across as being an uber heel and then delivers on it in the ring. She basically uh, had uh, Kari Zane's arm all twisted up and was stomping on it, working the arm all the way through the match and basically just showing you that she will target one particular thing like an like a hunter and just work it until it breaks lovely stuff Kari Zane proving to be the underdog getting angrier as the match went on the sort of cheery facade that she begins that with all the pirate stuff dropping and seeing her turn into a more serious competitor great spots in this again uh, lots of like those dives there was horrible twisting stuff there was submissions and then, this was the interesting one. It divided a lot of the people in the chat as well. Seeing the new brand of the NXT horsewomen in the crowd and Baszler was thrown into them um, and then they got involved in the match as well and one that I lovingly dubbed Hanson because of the very long hair just smashed, <laughs> smashed uh, Kyrie in the face and that knocked her out and that meant that Shayna Baszler was able to lock in a rear naked choke and basically just win. I, I didn't want Kari to lose. I was uh, very much invested in that match, but still, she did, and we have a new NXT Women's Champion in the form of Shayna Baszler. Hopefully this just means that Kari Zane is going to be moved onto the main roster sooner rather than later. Then we had uh, Becky versus Charlotte, uh, Charlotte Flair in the uh, first ever last women's standing. I was about to say the last ever first women's standing. That would have been a weird match. It was fantastic. It was slow, it started off very slow, but then it built, it told the story of what each woman would do to destroy, to dismantle the other. Now their story is the only one on the WWE main roster that is probably worth caring about. We've seen Becky go from being always so close to clutching the brass ring, but being denied by creative forces or whatever, and Charlotte being the one that would just have everything lavished upon her, she's always been in the main event. So for Becky to be the champion, to walk in there and to be such a bastard heel and the crowd to love it is super important. They were booing, they were booing Charlotte very, very hard. And it's this sort of intense crowd reaction that they both played on. Charlotte didn't try to be the good girl in this. She basically played up to be the heel and Becky really, she just went hell for leather. There was table spots, a botched table spot to be fair with the moon salt not breaking the table, but still, they improved a new one where Charlotte did a senton through it and that worked really well. Then there was uh, ladder spots in which the ladder went into business for itself and stood up on its own. That, that, I enjoyed that quite a lot. Then there was uh, one to the announce table through there. Then Becky threw loads of chairs and, and steel chairs and padded chairs and built, built a fort over Charlotte to just say, stay down, stay down for the count. She got back up and Becky just looked like she was freaking out. She didn't know what to do. It was storytelling that was done really, really well because neither woman's going to give up because of the fact, as we said before, these two were pioneers in the NXT division and they bloody showed it. It was a fantastic match by the end. I'd say, I'd say that I'd like to give this my, my match of the night. Um, I'd love to say that, but I probably would be torn between the Kari Zayn match and this. However, however, Becky retained and Again, neither woman looked weak coming out of it. I really, really enjoyed that. And then finally, we had my uh, my least anticipated match. I really, I love Ronda Rousey. Think that she's been here for a year and she is dominating the women's division in nearly every sense. 
Nikki Bella, on the other hand, I believe was great once upon a time, but uh, her position and uh, positioning, as it were, within the company has meant that she's gotten more opportunities than most other people. But, 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 this one-on-one -on -one match actually delivered. It surprised me quite a lot. I was hoping it was going to be a squash match and was disappointed when it didn't turn out to be, With especially with Ronda getting in so much offense on the beginning and then sort of it petering out with lots of slams into the ring post, lots of cheap moves by Brie. But then it hits you that it's weakening this giant, this mythical figure, this mythical warrior that she is, down to a person that can be beaten. And then you start to worry. You think, will she be beaten? Is this gonna happen? And then that's, that's good storytelling because the dominating warrior has to have some flaws, right? I mean, I, I, I bought into it towards the end and I found it to be an enjoyable match. Not the best match, but a very enjoyable. I especially loved the rolling cradle from the top rope that Ronda managed to lock into Nikki just before the match's finish. That looked great. Slammed her down hard onto a neck, then rolled her forward straight into the arm button. Nikki was tapping straight away. So Ronda, R Ronda Rousey retains her title and looks even stronger for it. And Nikki and Brie, well, they've got more grievances going forward into the next episodes of Raw and SmackDown, respectively, depending on where they go to next, if they stay on one brand. So that means that they're going to be looking to take out their anger somewhere else. Now, as a closing point, there was so little Stephanie McMahon. I was so happy about that. I just worried because of the fact that she interjected herself quite a lot into the whole setup of this, that I was worried that she was going to come down and maybe interject into the match to set up something for a future pay-per-view, and I'm glad that she didn't. The commentary was fantastic. I, I, I think that they called more actual moves in this pay-per-view than I've heard in many other pay-per-views combined. I... Michael Cole was the weakest commentator because he called them men at one point. That was interesting. He needs a break, doesn't he? Anyway, those were my thoughts on the Evolution pay-per-view. I thought that it was much better than the C-list pay-per-view that a lot of people had been terming it to be in the run-up. Because this had a massive display of talent condensed into a pay-per-view that didn't feel like it was overstaying its welcome. It had a great variety of matches, and yes, not all of them were the technical masterclasses that we wish that they would be, but still, I walked away from this just thinking, my god, the WWE, when given a chance, it can do amazing things. I wouldn't say that this is a takeover show, and I wouldn't say that this is a blockbuster event, but still, it is historic, and it definitely isn't a stinker. And that is all you can really hope for when you do something like this in the current climate of the wrestling industry. So yeah, those are my thoughts. Let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. I'm gonna go and get some rest because it is about three o'clock in the morning now and I am absolutely shattered. As always, I have been Jules, you have been awesome, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.